Hey guys, Viper right here. Just gonna do an update on uh, actual Vipers I'm working on for once. So um, I had my silver Viper, which was the convertible Gen 3 twin turbo. And then I've got this uh, black coupe Gen 3 and it's all stock. So um, what I'm working on doing is actually putting all the twin turbo stuff off the silver car onto this black car. Um, so I've kind of started doing a little bit of work um, started taking this one apart. I finally got my uh, my motor, which is kind of sitting back there. I'll show you a bit more on that in a bit. Um, that's a fully forged bottom end. Um, so hopefully that one will hold up to a bit more abuse than the, uh, than the stock bottom end. That one kind of uh, cracked the piston and I think it was about 730 wheel horsepower it cracked the piston at. So We'll see what this one's good for. Um, so I've just kind of document what I'm doing and uh, take you guys along for the ride. So like I say, I've just, kinda, this was, this is actually, this motor in this car probably only has about 8,000 kilometers on it. Um, the old motor was replaced. Um, this car is a 2006 coupe, the only year um, coupes were available in Gen 3s. Um, and then I've got my silver car here. It's kind of looking in a sad state right now. It's all taken apart. Um, so obviously last year I uh, pulled the motor out of it and kind of been working on just taking everything off, all the modifications out and putting this one pretty much back to stock. I think what I'll do is just put a um, a cam and headers and stuff onto that engine and then put it in the silver car and then this car is going to be the fully built one and then as far as the motor is concerned here is the motor um, i've got most of the parts already on it i probably should have uncovered it first but here we are so you can kind of see, I mean, not much you can really see. It's got, I've, I went for a, a wet sump oil system. You got a, so I've got an external uh, oil pump, um, all ARP hardware. Um, I've got uh, new springs, push rods. I put a 708 cam in there. A custom a ARP damper, which uh, is gonna work with this uh, oil pump setup. I'm just waiting for one more spacer to show up to finish that up. And then, um, yeah, I just kind of got the harness laid out here for the motor. Um, it's pretty much ready to go on. And then I need to just clean up this mess of wires. This is the standalone harness. Um, and then here you can see the belly pan that has my uh, scavenge pump mounted on it. So this, this is all going to go in the in the black car there. So this morning, what I did is I actually, I pulled the stock fuel pump out of this one, pulled, put the uh, the triple hanger pump in there, and then put the stock pump back into the silver car. So right now I'm just kind of, I was gonna lift it up on the, on the lift here, but um, I just don't, it's, it's not clearing because this car is much lower than that one. So I need to um, come up with a different solution to get it up on the lift. Um, I'll put it up on some blocks. So in the meantime, I don't wanna deal with that today. I'll deal with that tomorrow. For today, I'm just gonna work on getting everything disconnected in the engine bay, um, get ready to get uh, to pull this motor. All right, so a bit of an update. It's been a couple days. I've been slowly working at uh, getting everything out of this car. Um, there's pretty much no drive line left in it. Just pulled the transmission, pulled the rear end out yesterday, dropped it off um, to get the limited slip put in and uh, just got the engine out. Um, so it's uh, moving along and I'll show you guys uh, what I've got accomplished so far. So obviously this, uh, this engine came out uh, the same way as uh, in the silver car. Um, it's a little simpler. This is all, this one's all factory, so. It came out just fine. One thing I, I screwed up on 
is I managed to break the windshield down at the bottom here. So that's that kind of sucks. Uh, so I'll have to get a new one of those ordered up. Hopefully they still make uh, original ones. I really don't want an aftermarket one. Um, I think for Gen 3s you can still get them, but we'll find out. Um, so here's the engine that came out. So this is, like I say, this was a new engine that wasn't put in that long ago. Everything came apart properly. Um, clutch is pretty much brand new on it. Just have I had a quick look at it. Um, one quick note, if you are doing this uh, yourself and you're trying to take the transmission out, uh, make sure you unbolt the transmission from the bell housing first. Don't try to take it all out in one piece because it's not going to come out. Ask me how I know. So I kind of created a bit of a headache trying to get it all out because um, I unbolted the bell housing from the engine and then I was trying to get it all out. But the bell housing, there's no way for it to drop straight down. So then I had to drop uh, to unbolt the transmission from it. And that was a bit of a shit show, but I got it out. But anyway, um, now I know in the future um, to unbolt the transmission from the bell housing. Um, so and I've, got, I've got the front bumper off. Um, I'm just going to swap this uh, the reinforcement bar from the silver car because it's already modified for the intercooler and stuff. There's the intercooler sitting there. I mean, the, the shop's a, a, just a gong show right now. I'll have to spend the day in here cleaning it up. Um, this engine is pretty much ready to go in. I'm just going to clean up some wiring. I'm going to rewire these knock sensors. I just got new pigtails for them. Um, I've got the new coils in, got the uh, plug wires in, um, finally finished up the external oil pump drive here. Um, I was waiting on that spacer and this belt, all that finally came in, so all that is in now. Um, so we'll see how that all works. Um, but otherwise this engine's pretty much ready to go in. Um, I'm just going to clean up the wiring like I say. That's the wiring harness there. Um, it's been kind of hacked up, so I'm just gonna get rid of whatever is not being used. And then I still gotta swap over the injectors. These are uh, 800cc injectors on here, I believe. I gotta put some thousands on. Um, and otherwise, I think it's all pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm waiting on the new transmission because I'm gonna put a, um, a TR6060 in instead of the stock T56. I just don't know how long that's gonna take, so I might just put the T56 in for now, um, and then hopefully it doesn't break. Um, for the, I'm just gonna keep it in there until the 6060 is ready, um, probably just for the dyno tuning and the break-in and stuff, and then swap it out. Um, not much has really happened on on the silver car it's i had to push it outside today uh, so it's kind of it's wet and covered in water but uh, as you can see the transmission still in this car because when i pulled the engine i didn't drop the transmission so i didn't know about the whole bell housing thing so um now i know so if i i think i'll just keep this transmission in here i'm hoping the engine will go in without having to take take the transmission out but um we'll find out so that's kind of where we're at um so hopefully in the next few days um i'll be able to um get the wiring all cleaned up and um get the new engine in here um and then kind of start slowly buttoning it all up I'm, i've got the front end all taken apart here so I can mock up the inner cooler and then also the um, the new oil cooler. I took out the factory oil cooler that sits there. Um, I might mount the um, the oil filter there now. I'm not sure. We'll see how it fits because I'm I, I had to relocate the oil filter obviously. So we'll figure all that out once the engine's in. I'll I'll have a better idea of how it all fits, but. That's kind of an update for, for now, and we'll keep plugging away at it. Hey guys, so time for another uh, update on the Viper build here. So the engine's all 
together at this point, ready to go into the car. I've got uh, I've got it all buttoned up. Um, got the uh, the headers on. Ran the new wires. Kind of got these new wire holders in there, and I reused these um, spark plug socks. And I also used the factory shields to keep the wires as cool as possible. Um, everything else I've kind of showed you before. I've got the uh, the oil pump all on the front there with the hose and the the belt is on. I'll probably have to I'll have to take that belt off once the engine's in the car, and then I'll use a drill to uh, to prime the oil. Now, kind of show you what I've been working on on the car here. So I've got the intercooler mounted up. The uh, the oil cooler is in the back there, and I also had to relocate and make new lines for the power steering cooler. You can kind of see it sandwiched in the middle there. So the yeah, the factory hard lines, there was just no way for me to make them work. So these are the uh, the new lines I ran, just new 3 8 line. And that goes into, one line goes into the, uh, the steering rack there you can see, and the other line goes to the, um, the reservoir. You can kind of see, you can see the oil cooler here on the other side. Now, all on the sides here, it took me a bit to get all this stuff cut out. Um, I didn't really film any of it, which I wish I, I kind of did. But um, from the factory, there, there is a small kind of shield here on the bottom. And there's also a, a metal plate um, that kind of covers this section here. So all that had to be cut out because that's where the turbo sit. That's all the metal there that I removed. Um, and then I just used some uh, seam sealer here to get this all sealed up, make it look as factory as possible. And then I've uh, I found this paint actually, I was gonna show you guys the slow gloss black. Um, it's actually, um, you can see on the label, it's GM Chrysler, low gloss black, and it's the exact same color. Here you can see I kind of sprayed some on the frame, and it's the exact same color that you get from the factory on all the frame components. So um, I'm gonna finish kind of spraying it in here. I also had to cut out this little brace right here um, because that's where the, uh, the oil pump sits and that little brace gets in the way. So I'm just gonna paint that up. And then I'm pretty much ready to, uh, to put the engine back in. So I've got my uh, I've got my rear end sitting here ready to go. I just had it rebuilt. I put the uh, the limited slip in there. Um, it's the OS. I don't know how you say it. Geiken, Geiken, whatever it is. OS Geiken. Um, there, I've still got my factory T56 there. I'm waiting on my uh, 6060 to show up. So I'll probably just put the T56 in for now, and then when the uh, when the 6060 comes in, I'll, I'll swap it out. It's not really, it's all that difficult to uh, to swap transmissions. So I'll do that. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick update. Um, so I'll get the, uh, the time lapse going on the GoPro uh, when I start putting the engine in and hopefully uh, get that in today. And then I can work on making the oil lines to go to the cooler um, and to the remote filter mount and stuff. This is the remote filter mount I'm using and you still need to figure out where to put it. Um, in that kit that I got from RSI, they included this, it's a nice uh, machined billet and aluminum bracket, but I have no idea where they want me to put it and I haven't been able to get any answers from them. So I might, um, might not use it, might just mount this somewhere. Um, but I can't really figure out where to put it until, until the engine's in. Um, I think most people put them down low on the frame rails, but until I have the engine in, it's um, pretty much impossible to tell where it should sit. So I got to put the motor in first and then, uh, then I can work on that. Also down below here, I forgot to show you guys, this is where I ran the new fuel lines again. Um, it's a lot easier to do it when the transmission out is out on the silver car before 
I did it with the transmission in and it was a bit of a pain in the ass, but this way I was able to, uh, I took the factory fuel line out, the hard metal line, and then I just ran these kind of in the same area. So I've got them going up into the tank there. You see, that's where the, uh, this is where the factory fuel line used to be. And this is where these sit now. I've got that little filter there. And then um, they kind of route this way in the tunnel and then come up in the engine there. But it's a lot easier to do this with the rear end and stuff out of the car. And then I've still got to button up the, uh, this is all the, the fuel pump wiring here, the relays and stuff. So that's kind of where it all connects to the battery. And then these are just uh, old sound system stuff that they had in this car. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not, but it's it's all here still. But yeah, for now, pretty much everything's out of this car, all the drivetrain. So you can see the, uh, the whole tunnel is empty for now. So I'm currently installing the, the flywheel. I'm working on the, uh, the center force clutch and flywheel right now. Quick little trick I learned, I, I think I saw it on Facebook or Instagram or something, to prevent the engine from spinning. You just use a chain and uh, I put it on one of the studs here on the flywheel and then I put a bolt into the back of the engine where the bell housing goes and that will that holds the, um, the flywheel from spinning as I'm tightening the, uh, the flywheel bolts. Just a quick little note for you guys. All right, so a bit of a progress update. Um, engine's in. So I've started kind of working on trying to get some stuff in here, see how it all fits. I had to take the intercooler back off um, to get my engine stand far enough in. 
or engine lift anyway, so I could get the engine in. So now I'm kind of working on plumbing everything. I've started plumbing the oil cooler. You see I ran that uh, to dash 12 line and to the bottom here, and that goes to the pump. So right now I've got the belt off the pump, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to prime the whole system once, uh, once I've got it all put together. So you can see where the pump sits. Obviously, this diagonal that was here, that would have been in the way. So now that that's gone, kind of gives you a bit more space to work with. Um, you see where I've got the power steering cooler lines running. I wrapped them in this protective sheathing so uh, to stop them from rubbing on uh, any metal. So I've got those there. Um, I've got the engine held up with a ratchet strap right now. Now my one issue that I'm having is my pulley is hitting my power steering, my steering rack. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, I'm waiting on a smaller spacer that goes between the, uh, the crank pulley and this pulley that comes down to the pump. You can kind of see I've got some space to play with here. So with a smaller spacer, um, that should solve my problem. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, it wasn't all too eventful. That was kind of the, uh, I had to pretty much take all the stuff off the front to get the engine in. Um, I thought it could uh, make it all fit with it all assembled, but that was not the case. So we can, um, we can lower the car and show you guys what we've got going on at the top. can also start working on uh, getting the turbos in there. But I want to get the, uh, the front of the engine buttoned up first before I do anything else. So I... Looking at the front here, I've got the belt on, I've got the AC compressor back in, power steering pumps back in. Um, everything else is gonna go in after. Once I've got this all figured out, then I'll be able to put everything else in. Um, and then I'm gonna start working on wiring. But, Hopefully I'll be able to get this thing together relatively soon and then book it in for tuning. Um, but this is where I'm at right now. At least I've got the engine in today. I was hoping to get the transmission in too. Um, but with this issue with the front, I still, um, I wanna get that resolved first. And then I've also got to figure out where I'm going to put this, the uh, remote oil filter mount. Um, I still haven't been able to get any answers from RSI and where they put them. They sold me this bracket, really nice build aluminum piece. Um, and they seem to think, they don't even know really where it goes. So... They seem to think that it might go here where the oil cooler used to be, but none of these holes line up. Um, so it's supposed to kind of mount to that bracket like that. Um, and then you can mount the, the oil filter. Um, the one issue I have is that if the oil filter is here, when I'm doing an oil change, first of all, I have my, my uh, Charge pipes are gonna be right there. So that's gonna be fun trying to get to that oil filter. And also when you take the oil filter off, oil is gonna go everywhere. So that's not an ideal place to put it. Um, Cause trying to clean up all that oil after is it's not gonna be fun. So I don't know really where else to put this thing. Um, there's not really any space down low on the frame. I was hoping to just put it on the frame somewhere, but that doesn't seem to uh, 
be the case that it's going to work. So I think my only real option is to put it here somewhere and then um, hope that when I'm doing oil changes, I can, um, I guess I'll just, oil will just drain down there or I'll have to use some sort of a little funnel or something to, uh, to collect, or maybe I can put a little can underneath and collect the, uh, the oil as it comes out. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to just put it in this direction um, because then I can just run the lines nice and tidy. If I've got it this way or this way, when the lines coming upwards wouldn't be ideal. I could put them, put it this way, I guess, and just um, put the fittings on the bottom. But that's where I'm stuck at the moment. So hopefully I'll get this figured out. And then um, I was actually hoping to also use this space to put my um, oil pressure sensor and stuff here. Um, there is a fitting on this one that I might be able to utilize. And maybe I can make some sort of a little bracket here and mount my, I wanna put a, an aftermarket oil pressure sensor and then put the factory one there too maybe. I don't know yet. I'm gonna work on that also. I might just um, tap into this because this is where I think they, they have a provision for that. So if I've got, if I've got it sitting here, like so, that gives me space so I can just put the sensor in here um, and then just keep the factory sensor down there. So I might just do that. But anyways, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'll uh, do some more filming once I get some more stuff done. So quick update, got the uh, remote oil filter mounted. I just made a little quick bracket um, of some stainless steel I've got kicking around. Um, so I just mocked it up and I'll just paint it black so that um, my flashlight's dying. I'll paint it black and then we'll be able, be able to see it. So I decided to kind of mount it this way and that gives me space down below for the oil filter. And when I drain it, um, I'll just put something underneath and try to catch as much oil as possible. And so now I think what I'll do is um, I'll change these two fittings. I'll put the in on this side and then I can run my oil line straight down with a 90. I'll see how a 90 fits. If not, then I'll just leave it on that side. Um, but yeah. That's where I've got got this mounted, and then the out. From, so from here, it just goes straight down into the engine. You can kind of see where that right red plug is. So that that'll be a straight shot down. I'll probably use like a forty-five here, and then go down with it. So that's where I'm at. All right. So we're at about a a week later now. It's kind of slow going seems everything I do I go to put it on and then find something else doesn't fit so then I have to redo stuff so anyway here's where we're at now so the engines in um, I've got the intercooler connected properly had to move it over a little bit um, to get it to line up um, got the transmission in got the rear end in um, so that's all but buttoned up had a hell of a time getting the half shafts onto the, the new stub axles with those uh, snap rings on there. Um, I pretty much had to um, shave the snap rings down because I guess the new half shafts, the grooves in them aren't machined as deep as the original ones. So to show you what I'm talking about, these are the original stub shafts. So these grooves here, they're deeper than the new ones. Um, 
so what happens is the snap ring that goes in there, you see this one's got the snap ring in it, um, it needs to be able to go in deep enough so that when you try to put the half shaft on, um, I'll show you with these half shafts, when you try to put the half shaft on, it compresses the ring and then it just slides in. But what was happening is the ring um, on those other stub shafts wasn't compressing enough. So there was no way for me to get this uh, half shaft pushed past the, uh, the snap ring. So once I figured that out, I just uh, took, my, took the grinder to these uh, snap rings, shaved them down enough to uh, give myself enough clearance and then I was able to, uh, to slide them on. At first I was just gonna run it with no snap rings at all, but I tried that and I noticed that the half shaft would kind of slide off this, the stub shaft to kind of where it was sitting there sometimes and I didn't want to kind of risk having half of it being engaged only. So that's why I kind of took it back apart and um, got those uh, got those snap rings in there so that's where i'm at right now i'm gonna start working on getting the turbos in um, once those are in i've pretty much got all the wiring done i've got it all sitting here ready to be connected <coughs> so you see i've got the um old Deutsch connectors on everything so that's all there. Um, I've got the um, the actual ECU wiring sitting here. I just need to run it through into there. But to do that, I need um, to be able to get into the car. And to get into the car, I need to get it off the lift. So that's kind of why I've been focusing on being able to um, put the wheels back on it, which is I'm pretty much at that point now. So um, I'll get the turbos in, do whatever else I need to do underneath while the car is still on the lift, and then get it off the lift, finish up the wiring, and then I should be able to get it started. Um, I've got an appointment booked with my tuner for May 1st for the uh, dyno tuning. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just get the car, get the engine running, make sure it runs and the thing drives, and then just take it to the dyno and have him do a proper break-in on the dyno, break in the engine, break in the clutch, um, and then also tune it for the larger injectors and more boost and all that stuff. So that's where I'm at. Um, you can kind of see all the stuff in the back here. I've got, that's my E85 flex fuel sensor. I've got all the fuel lines ran there. There's my uh, fuel pressure regulator back there. Um, and yeah, so I'm kind of just trying to hide everything as much as I can, keep it as clean as possible. Um, that way it kind of looks sort of like it was supposed to be there. And then here's how I mounted my oil filter. Um, so I, I reused the, um, those stock bolts where the oil cooler was. And then I made a couple little brackets there and then I mounted the, uh, the oil filter relocation. And then I've also got my another oil pressure sensor in here because I don't trust the factory one. So I've still got the factory one down there. You can kind of see it um, next to where the uh, the soil line goes into the engine. So, and then um, let me lift it up and then I'll show you underneath. So it's up in the air here. Now you can see the bottom. So I've got the uh, the external oil pump sitting here. I put um, put about a gallon of oil in there um, just to prime it a little bit. There you can see there you can kind of feel some resistance on the oil pump here, but um, I can't fill it up completely until I've got my uh, my turbo oil feed lines connected. Otherwise, it'll just start pouring out of there. 
uh, but once the turbos are in, I'll be able to uh, to hook up the all the oil lines and then prime the whole system. And that way, um, I'll, ma I'll make sure that I've got the engine fully primed before it's started. Um, I've also got these um, aftermarket wheel speed sensors up here, so these will be this will be used for uh, launch control and uh, maybe traction control. Um, we'll see. Here we've got, so here as you can see, I've got my uh, turbo pipes mounted. I've got my gold heat shielding there. These are my vacuum lines for the turbos and the waste gates. Um, you can see the transmission. So I put the T56 in for now. Um, I'm still waiting for my tail housing for my T6060 and then it's gonna be fully upgraded with new internals. So for now, I'll just run the T56 and not beat on it too much. So you can see the rear end is in, stub shafts, half shafts, so everything I just told you about, all that's connected. I need to put a new U-joint on the uh, drive shaft. I just haven't put the drive shaft straps back on. Um, I'll show you the 6060 and the parts car that this transmission came out of and I've got a bunch of parts that I don't know if I'm going to sell them or keep them or what I'm going to do with them. So this is a, the uh, 6060 so the um, the tail shaft housing was damaged in the accident um, and was removed. So I found another one that's currently um, being machined because it's off a T56 but um, Texas Drive Train Performance told me that the T56 tail shaft housings are the same as the 6060s, except the uh, the output shaft is larger on the 6060, so it just it can be machined to accept the uh, the larger output shaft. So they're working on that for me. Um, I also got this. This is um, 8.4 liter out of a Gen 4 that um, probably just gonna sell. I was thinking about putting it into. Thinking about putting it into this car, but um, I'll, I don't know if I'm going to keep this car. And really, putting that Gen 4 engine in there is not really increase going to going to increase the value too much. So I might just sell that engine, sell this car. Um, and then here is the parts car. That's uh, it's a Gen 4 coupe. It was crashed on the front passenger side here. It's completely destroyed on this side but um it's got the rear end is completely good here's some of the parts i've taken off i've got all the spindles off got a rear got the rear diff out of it got all four brakes seats um the wheels actually are in pretty nice shape uh, they all survived the accident which is kind of surprising um here you can see the coupe rear end. I might just keep it because who knows? I might come across a convertible one of these days that, that needs to be converted into a coupe, and I've got all the parts sitting right here. So I might just do that. Here's the interior. This interior I'm gonna sell. I don't like this two tone gray and black interior. Um, not much else really good on this, but. Too bad the hood didn't survive. Would have been a nice Gen 4 hood. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I'm gonna take all these. I think I'm gonna get them wrapped in Alcantara and put them into the black car. Because um, I'm not a big fan of this uh, material that they use. Just kind of plasticky stuff. I think it'll look nicer if it's wrapped. That, that's kind of it for an update. There are my sea that that uh, only, they're about 10 years old and they've got 60 hours on them. So clearly they, <laughs> not much, they don't get much use out of them. But here we are. So I've, uh, oh, I also picked up a, a couple front tires. These are 295s, um, Pilot Sports. I don't know if they're gonna, they might be too big. For the wheels I've got coming. These are 295 30s. We'll see. 
because the uh, the stock size is uh, oh it's on the bottom there. But once the new wheels show up, then I'll try them out. And so that's where it's at. Hopefully by next week I'll be able to get it running. I won't be able to work on it next couple of days here, so and then it's the weekend. So um, yeah, kind of the goal is to get it running next week and then just in time for May 1st to get all the bugs ir ironed out and uh, get it in for dyno tuning. So thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe and we'll have more updates on this car soon.